right? We're using the fact that because they're optimizing, the margin of utility of the various goods are proportional to their prices. And therefore, when you say, well, I got more of X, less of Y, how do I trade them off? Well, the answer is I know how to trade them off. The prices tell me exactly how to trade them off. So I know each extra unit of X was worth three and X, each less unit of Y was worth two. I can trade them off one against the other. I can observe his relative values of the different goods because I can observe the prices in the market. See that? Yes. No. Where did I use Lambda Wisconsin? I didn't use anything about Lambda Wisconsin. These are, if they're not, well, let's think about it. Let's assume these are not small changes. Let's think about what happens with, let's think about what's going on here, because this, this is actually going to be helpful. So, think about the two good case, okay? Here's x1, here's x2. This is n equals 2. In the n equals 2 world, I can draw a graph, right? My budget constraint in n equals 2 world looks like that, right? That's my budget constraint in n equals 2. This is m over p1. This is m over p2. My equilibrium looks like that. This is my equilibrium indifference curve that I'm on, right? This is my indifference curve. This is u of x1, x2 equals some u star, which is the maximum utility I can obtain. And there's my equilibrium right there. Right? If I look at that equation over there on the board, that left-hand side is the slope of the indifference curve in absolute value at each point. The right-hand side is the slope of the budget line, and my equilibrium says i got to be tangent. That's really what that equation is. This equation here. This is the absolute value of the indifference curve slope. This is the absolute value of the budget line slope. And the equilibrium point is where those two things are equal. And I can think about, like, you know, what's wrong with that point? Well, what's wrong with that point is what? Why is that not a good point? How would you explain what's wrong with this point here? You could spend the same amount and get it. Okay. Right, that's one way. But that's kind of like saying it's not maximum. That's what it means not to be maximum. It's like, it's not the best point because I can get something better. That's what you told me. Okay, but what, what about in terms of thinking about it that way, in terms of that equation? The slope of this indifference curve measures how much of this good I'm willing to give up to get more of good one. At this point, what's wrong with this point? Right, my value of x1, which is the slope of this indifference curve, exceeds my cost of good one, which is the slope of this budget line. Therefore, I should move to, I should get more one. Right? I should move to the right. My equilibrium is here. So in equilibrium, I have to be tangent. That's what these first order conditions are telling you. And this equation is exploiting that tangency. It says, look, I can't. I don't know this guy's indifference curves. I don't know, I, I can't measure his indifference curves, but I can measure his budget line, and I know his indifference curve has to be tangent to his budget line. Okay. Now let's get to your question. But I not only know his indifference curve is tangent to the budget line, I know his indifference curve kind of is above that budget line, right? It can't be below it. It's got to be tangent the way I've drawn it. It has to be tangent from above. So this equation here implicitly is approximating his indifference curve by the budget line. It's using this budget line to approximate the indifference curve, which means it's going to be biased in a particular direction. It means if you're moving, if that term is zero, so you're moving along the budget line, you're actually getting somewhat worse off. 
right? This is going to have like the second order term here is going to be biasing it toward if you're moving along the budget line, which means that term is zero, first order you're indifferent. You're getting no change in utilities. Second order you're worse off. Okay? And we'll come, when we talk about price indices, we'll come back and talk about that. It's one of the reasons why price indices are going to have some issues because they're not going to, second order, they're not going to, um, oh, you know, in fact, it's, it's a good feature. In second order, they're going to be off in one direction or the other. Does that help answer your question? Any, any questions that people have? Any, uh, any questions before, before we move on? So one of the things I like to emphasize is that there's a lot of content to just utility maximization. Just utility theory alone, the more, probably the most important message is this proportionality and equilibrium between prices and margin utilities. And the reason that turns out to be so important is we can measure prices directly. Whereas when it comes to measuring utilities, not so easy. Not something. You don't, you don't have a utility meter on your head. I can't look at your, your, your head and figure out what your utility is. I have to infer something about the preferences from your observed behavior. And the process and the idea that you're maximizing is going to give me a powerful way for looking into your preferences. And I'll come back in a minute and talk about preferences because, you know, again, one of the major problems we're going to have as economists is we really don't have a really good theory of preferences. We really don't. We have sort of an empirical theory of preferences. People like what they like. How do I know they like it? Because they choose it. That really is our theory. Our theory of preferences is people like what they choose. That's what maximization is all about. You know, it would be much better if we had a theory that could tell you what people like without having seen their choices to begin with. You'd be a really good marketer if you could figure that out. You could figure out what products people were going to like before you produced them. But, you know, we waste a lot. We spent a lot of resources producing products that ultimately people didn't like nearly as much as we thought they would. But that's okay. Any questions that people have before before I move forward? All right. So where do we go from here? You know, we already have expressed kind of the fundamental idea of maximization. 